Welcome back to Real Estate Happenings, your go-to podcast for all things real estate. This week, we have a special guest, George Mosley. Thank you you so much for being here. And we have actually more guests, as you guys can see. And I'm not sure if Ella's too excited. George, how are you today? I'm good. How about yourself, man? I'm wonderful. Wonderful. George Mosley is a respected breeder and expert in the French Bulldog community. With 15 years of experience and a deep understanding of the breed, he's here to talk about all things Frenchies, life as an entrepreneur, and how we share a cameraman. Are you ready? How long have you worked with Preston? I didn't even realize that we share a cameraman. I've been working with Preston over a decade. I'm I'm not sure how long it's been, but it's been a a long time. Longer than me, Preston? I was working at News Today, so I put him on the uh, Future Cam at Dog Show. That's the first Wow. So you've been lying to me this whole time. <laughs> well, why don't we start by introducing these guys? Who do we have here? Okay, on the table, we have Limited Edition. He's a manager French Bulldog. Okay. Um, we have Smooches, who is a fluffy. Oh, wow. And then we also brought Suave. Suave is also Suave. a big rope. Can we show Suave in here? Yeah, he's called a big rope fluffy. A big what again? Yeah, a big rope. He, over his nose, he has a bigger than normal rope. Okay. Yeah. And this is just... Oh, my goodness. He, he's not as calm as limited. He okay. likes to play a lot, so... He does? Yeah. And how old is Suave? Suave is nine months. Nine months. Yeah. Okay, Ella is a little shy. It's definitely... <laughs> she likes the- Suave, though. She's she been does? playing with him the whole time. Okay, so make sure that Suave doesn't fall off the table. <laughs> so how did this begin for you? Tell me, I'm going to let Ella go because even though she's used to being on the billboards, I feel like she's not um, too excited right now. Okay, tell me how this all started. And can I hold this? Yes, you can. You can. Smooches. smooches. Look, this is what we call the smooches. Look at her. Look at her face. Watch what she do to you. Get a little closer. Is she going to bite me? No, she's going to kiss you. Oh. <gasps> is that why you're called smooches? Yeah. She likes adorable. to kiss. So yeah, I, I, start, I started breeding in 2006. Okay. Um, That's when I got serious with it. Mm-hmm. I started off breeding American Bulldogs. Okay. I mean, American Bullies. Have you ever heard of American Bullies? I haven't. Yeah, American Bullies, it's a bigger... Pit bull. Okay. You know, and it's more calm than a pit. You know, pit bulls are known to be aggressive. Okay. American bull is a more uh, is a more calm dog. Okay. So that's the breed that I started off breeding with. And then, how did Frenchies come about? Um, Frenchies came about. You know, at first, I used to think. You know, I always wanted big dogs. I never okay. wanted a small dog. Because these and are they, definitely small yeah, dogs. Yeah, they, they're small dogs. And when I got a Frenchie, you know, the way... She almost jumped out of my hands. <laughs> the way the Frenchies are, you know, the temperament, you know, they they playful. Mm-hmm. You know, they're a smaller dog. They eat less. So um, I ended up getting one, and I, and I fell in love with it. And then after that, you know, I started breeding them. You know, I definitely fell in love with mine, too. Yeah. And I was not a fan of Frenchies. My husband thought... I've always had Maltese. Do you know mm-hmm. what a Maltese is? Yes, so they're very small... Um, I don't want to say he it's calls like them girly dogs. dogs. Yeah. He calls them girly dogs. They're not girly. Okay. Maltese are very masculine, <laughs> but he wanted a Frenchie. Yeah. So when we got Ella, I immediately fell in love with her. Yeah. She's so playful. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love Frenchies as well. Like this boy right here, limited edition. He's very calm. I take him all over the world. You do? Like literally all over the world. And uh, he's, he's special guest in a lot of places we go. So he travels a lot. So that's, you know, that's why he has calm as he is. Wow. And he likes to stay under me as well. He is so sweet. Okay, let's talk about Smooches because okay. I'm obsessed with her and she is so cute, but I'm scared to ask. <laughs> How much does Smooches go for? Smooches, well, let me give you the history behind the fluffies a little bit price-wise. Um, have you ever seen the show of My Breeders Life? I have. You have? Uh, we talked about that in one of the uh, episodes. Okay. You know, the Fluffies, when they first came out, a lot of people, they was like in the six digits. In the six digits for Fluffies. It's not that anymore, you know, but it Can was for a very base. long time. Six digits? <laughs> yeah, Should six I give this digits. Dog up? <laughs> okay. But right now, you know, a dog like her would be about 30 grand. Okay. Yeah. Didn't I guess that right? I told my team earlier, I was like, she has to be like 30 grand. Yeah. So Smooch is 30 grand. Yeah, she's around that. Wow. I cannot believe that. Yeah. Well, she is so cute. She's Thank adorable. You. Um, I really like her. 
I don't have 30 grand, <laughs> but I do have this watch. Oh, yeah? What kind of watch So, can it? you think about maybe us trading? Oh, we could, we could think about We could maybe do something. <laughs> Where's my husband? Is he watching this? A dog for a Rolex. I mean... I just did um, a video where I sold a Birkin. Do you know what a Birkin is? Yes. It's a very expensive handbag, uh -huh. and I sold it to grow one of our businesses. So, I mean, I don't think Jose would be mad about me selling my Rolex or trading yeah. it yeah. for Fluffy. And that's right. a good thing about French Bulldogs, too, being a breeder. Okay. Like, a lot, of the, a lot of times when we make money off of that, we can do other investments. You know, like real estate. I know you do a lot of real estate, and that's one thing that I do. Also, when I breed a dog or I take some of that money and put it against, you know, properties. Tell me what kind of real estate you currently own or you like to invest in. Okay. I, right now, you know, I'm a rookie. Like I said, I took money from dogs and put it into real estate. Mm -hmm. So I have like four properties right now. Um, and one of them is I rent out and then the other three I'm actually uh, working on uh, rehabbing them right now. You started breeding the dogs. You started, you know, um, developing wealth through it. So what happened next? Why real estate? What made you think of, let me get into real estate? Because real estate is, is going to always be here. That's you right. Know, no matter what, real estate that's is right. going to be around. Okay. And Frenchies or dogs, you know, that's not a necessity. You know, mm -hmm. that that business can stop at any at any moment. So right. I don't take that for granted, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I take that money to invest in something that will last. So what kind of properties are you currently investing? Just rental homes, flips? Uh, right now, I'm trying to invest in rental homes. Rental you know, I'm homes. trying to build stuff, you know, for, for generations. So, mm -hmm. you know, my kids and my grandkids after me can have something you to look forward to. You don't have grandkids. To. Yeah, I have grandkids. Oh, my God. <laughs> this man is too young to have grandkids. Yeah. No, you know, real estate, I talk about this a lot. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but 90% of all billionaires have built their wealth because of real estate. Yes, ma'am. And it's... You can always sell it if you have to, but it's so important to hold it. And, you know, that everybody sees me and selling million dollar homes. And that's why I wanted us to do the podcast because, you know, with dogs that are selling at this price point, I just feel like they think, okay, you know, you make your money from selling million dollar homes. But in reality, we personally have built our wealth from real estate. Yeah. I mean, we paid for our wedding with our first flip. I bought a house, we flipped it, and then that's how we got married. I was 21 at the time. Yeah. So it's so interesting to hear you say that. And it's the same with the dogs. Uh, when I bought my first French Bulldog, I believe I paid like six grand for it. Mm -hmm. And then I sold that same dog to China well, like four months later for 25 grand. Wow. And that right there made me, I was like, man, you can really make money doing this mm -hmm. and make people happy at the same time. So, so when you sell... A dog, what does that process look like? Or how are you marketing yourself to do that first? Well, it's, it's a little easy for me to market myself now because, you know, I've been doing it for like over 16 years. So this didn't so, happen overnight? Oh, no, not at all. Okay. I love pointing that out yeah. because you have individuals that think I'm just going to get some dogs and or any business, right? And yeah. it's going to turn around quickly. Yeah. And a lot of people think that. They think they can just get into the dogs and they see, oh, well... A dog selling for 30 grand, you know, not everybody can sell that same dog for 30 grand just because you have it. You know, you have to build relationships with people. You know, you have to build your name and your brand first before you can do that. Um, I didn't really start making this type of money until 2020 when everybody wow. started doing bad. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when the recession and uh, COVID came, mm -hmm. I think people wanted to have, you know, animals around dogs. So it kind of got good for me there. Do you have a wait list for the dogs? Yes, I do have a wait list. How long is that wait list? About six months. Wow, six months out. And if someone's interested in a Frenchie, how do they find you? They can uh, go on any one of my social medias, mm -hmm. Mosley's Frenchies mm -hmm. on Instagram. Um, they can find us on YouTube. Um, you can just Google my name, George Mosley. You know, and they'll know where to find you. Yeah. Okay. What about the network events? You said he travels with you around the world. What do those events look like? Um, a lot of a lot of them are, are dog shows. Um, the Inner Frenchie World Limited Edition is is well known. Um, He's famous. Yes. Um, I got him from China. Wow. And, uh, you know, he matches his name. He's limited edition. You know, you don't see too many Frenchies as small as him, with the same you know girth and everything. But uh, to answer your question, we go to a lot of dog shows. People you know, want us to fly out as special guests 
so that people can actually see what a miniature French Bulldog looks like. And who puts on these events? Um, different breeders. You know, okay. different breeders, you know, that's, that's known in the community, put on events. I myself um, also host some of the dog shows. Um, we just hosted a dog show recently called the Frenchie Bowl. Okay. Uh, it's a show that we do in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. where we get all Frenchies from all over the world. They come out and compete in different categories. And whenever they compete, what is uh, what are they competing for? Um, they compete for different prizes. You know, some people compete for bra uh, bragging rights, you know, money. They compete for titles. So if you have a sanctioned show, that's when you compete for titles. The more you win, your dog get points into becoming a champion, a grand champion, stuff like that. Okay, so you start breeding Frenchies. You fall in love with them. You're going to these network events. How do you, because you have a brand, you know, breeder, my breeder's life, yes. right? And how do you develop this brand? Do you hire a company? Do you have a dream about it? How does this all start? Well, me personally, I like to do a lot of the footwork myself. You okay. know, me, a couple of my friends, um, we always travel and go to networking events. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to network with people. It's Amen. the only way. You can't just sit at home. Some people try to sit behind a computer and do it. Like, you have to get out and let people, you have to see people. You have to, you know, get out and talk. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the only way. So. It's so important to network. Yeah. And some of the networking events that I attend, I have to pay to attend. But I always tell everybody, you have to pay to play. Yeah. You know, it's those relationships. But your name, where did the name come from? My Breeder's Life. All right. Um. Well, before My Breeder's Life, it was Mosley's Frenchies. You okay. know, Mosley, which is my last name. Mm -hmm. You know, we build off of that. And uh, My Breeder's Life came about um, with me and my friend Preston. And a couple of my friends, Dwayne. This Preston? Yeah, yeah Preston, Chief Doodle. You know, I have uh, my friend Dwayne, uh, Donald. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we go around and follow follow breeders mm -hmm. that's in the industry. Okay. And, um, and we just give different stories because not every breeder is the same. A lot of breeders do different things. And people on the outside that see breeders, they only, when you think of a breeder, you probably think of, a bunch of dogs just sitting somewhere yes. and people breeding them and just selling the pups. Yes. But it's not like that. A lot of us have relationships with our dogs. So people have to see that. That's you beautiful. Know? I so love that. So we, we follow those stories. And mm -hmm. my breeder's life is just that. It's my breeder. Like everybody that buy dogs, they have some type of breeder. So it's my breeder's life. You know, so we, we show that and broadcast that to, to the world so I that people can that. see the life behind the breeder. I love your videos. Preston sat me down and showed me the videos that you guys did and yes. the branding and everything just, it looks so professional that, you know, if you're making this type of investment, I feel like you want to do it with the right individual. Yes. I mean, I love the brand so much in your videos that I got mad at him. I was like, <laughs> why the hell aren't you doing these videos for me? Why don't my videos look it, like it that? Was a, it was a long time coming, you know, because at first I was, uh, Preston was coming to video my son in his sports events. Oh, and wow. I used to always tell him, man, I want to follow breeders and do like a reality show. Okay. But I couldn't afford him. You know, I was like, well, when I can afford you, I'm coming to get you because I Why like your work. Why does that story sound so familiar, <laughs> Preston? Yours the same way? Yes. Yeah, I, I couldn't afford him. Yeah, I couldn't afford My him. My first $4 million house, yeah. I had to convince him. I was like, listen, I can't pay you right now, but I promise you one day I will. Yeah. And you know, Preston, he's like, all right, let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. Look at this guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love him. Okay, so six months wait list. How did the fluffy come about? The fluffies came about like I'm not a hundred percent sure on how the fluffies came about. A lot of people um, say it was mixed in, you know. And fluffies wasn't my thing at first, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I was always against it and trying to breed to the standard mm -hmm. and what you know everybody say the standard is. Right. But it's like any other company. Just because you don't like it. No mean, you know, that you can't have that for your, your clientele or your customers. Right. Just like Walmart or any other store, I'm pretty sure right. they don't like all their the items that they sell. So to answer your question, um, for me, it came about me just seeing that that's what a lot of my clientele wanted. They wanted right. fluffy. So Supply and demand. Yeah. So, you know, I ended up breeding to one, you know, and to build my own, I put it into my own line mm -hmm. to try to uh, create one. When, and I don't know if you can answer this, what is the most expensive fluffy that you have sold? That I have sold? Mm -hmm. I haven't sold any fluffies. I've only been buying them now. 
Because okay. I just got into the fluffies okay. a couple of years because, like I said, I wasn't into it. I was more on trying to make a Pacific look than okay. the fluffy. Okay, so what is the highest price that you've seen for a fluffy? Um, I've seen fluffies go for 600000 Okay, no. what makes a fluffy $600,000? It's, it's the DNA. It's the person that's in the front. If you're a breeder and you have that dog, say you you had a dog for six hundred grand. Every time you stud that dog out, say he stud feed ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it won't take you long to get that six hundred thousand back. And then you know from the puppies and so forth. So as a breeder, you'll make that money back pretty quick. But what about someone like myself or someone that just falls in love with this beautiful dog? I want to buy it. How do you explain that price tag? I don't want to breed them. I just want a companion. See, if you just want a companion, it's different. You know, um, they can, if the breeder wants to sell you that dog, they can sell you that dog with no rights. Okay. Saying that you can't breed a dog and they might neuter the dog and they have to sell the dog probably to you for half of the price that it would cost you. But still at 300,000, <laughs> at 300,000, I don't think you want a pet, you know. That is expensive. Yeah. So the buyers that are paying these price tags, they are breeders. They're Most not Most of them are breeders or are celebrities. You celebrities. Know, a lot of celebrities spend that type of money too because, you know, it's like a trophy. To them that was my next question. Who the heck is paying 300,000 for dogs? Yeah. Celebrities. And, and see, if I have a dog that expensive, me, I like to – um if 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 I have a customer and they come and they I don't want to spend that I don't want to breed a dog, but I do, you know. So I might build a relationship with you, that you know it's your pet, but we can make money together later. You know, right. you can be like a solid investor, mm -hmm. and we still make money. You know, I had a knowledge to to breed a dog, so you know if you if my buyer would be cool with that. You know? I feel like he's convincing me, right? <laughs> like he's trying to come. I'm not it's doing easy. that. Ella's a princess. She can't. It's easy. She won't participate. <laughs> but that's, okay, so celebrities, are you able to disclose who you've seen has paid this kind of money for fluffies? Mm, well, I, I personally, you know, sold dolls for, you know, 100 okay. 50 And I have um, Mendici. He's, uh, he's pretty known. He's a celebrity. I've mm -hmm. sold to uh, Kevin's heart wife. Um, I sold to a couple of celebrities myself. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. And where did they find you? On your social media? Social media, word of mouth, you know. I love the power of social media because anyone that has a great idea and has that drive can be successful. Don't yeah. you agree? Yes. And that's what I try to tell a lot of people, too. I don't care what it is you do. Mm -hmm. If you put the effort behind it, like selling dogs, nobody never imagined that I'll make the type of money that I make selling dogs. You know, but uh, I put my all into it. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that I do, you know, I travel. I do everything that it takes to build my brand so that I can, you know, make that type of money off dogs. And it's not just making the money off the dogs. When I do make the money off the dogs, we do put back into the community. We do give job opportunities to people. I love you that. You know, so it's, it's, it's not just making the money. It's putting back into the community. Which is into important. Into the community, as I said. For sure. No, yeah. definitely. Do you see most inquiries come through from the YouTube or from Instagram? All of it. All, All of it. it. Um, it's just different clientele. Most of the people from YouTube, they're not breeders. You know, a lot of uh, my Instagram followers, they are breeders. Okay. So it's, you know, it's a different following, but they, they kind of equal. Interesting. But I think YouTube would do a lot better over the long run. I would love to see a video of maybe you selling one of your dogs, and then, I mean, and this is for you, Preston, like documenting buying real estate with it. Yeah. I think that would be super and we, we cool. Have, we have, we got footage of that. It's just me, a lot of times, people do pay in cash, mm -hmm. and me, I don't like to put those videos out there, but mm -hmm. Preston have a lot of videos with us doing yeah, we those don't type of transactions. Yeah. out there. You have yeah. to be so careful nowadays. <laughs> yeah, you know, but we see a lot of people do it all the time because- some people use it as a marketing strategy. People mm -hmm. see you making all this money. They see the money. Oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. So they go to that breeder because they see the flashy stuff and the money because they think they can do the same thing. So, you know, some people have their reasons for flashing the money. Mm -hmm. It's just not for me. Yeah, you know? I understand that. So what's next for you? What's oh, next for my breeder's life? Oh, what real gonna... estate do you want to buy? 
I want to buy some of them million dollar homes you said. <laughs> hey, that's what I want to get to. Here? Yeah, that's what I want to get to. I think, you know, um, commercial. Commercial is great. It's doing great this year. So that would definitely be something that I would recommend. I'm buying commercial myself. Yeah. So, so maybe maybe we could do something together. You know, I would some love type that. Of way. People think you need millions to buy real estate, yeah. especially when you think of commercial. I mean, look at this building. I would have never thought in a million years that my husband and I would own something like yeah. this. It is a nice spot. It's so nice. I definitely always want to promote you don't need a million dollars to buy a piece of real estate yeah. like this for sure. And what's next for my breeder side? Oh, continue to build, continue to, you know, show the stories of other breeders and to pitch it to a network. Okay. You know, that's that's our main main goal and main, you know, objectives. Objective is to get it to a a nice network. I love that you idea. Know, so for sure. We're gonna keep pushing. It's you know, it's a it's only a team of four or five of us. Mm-hmm. And you know, we do what it takes to continue to, you know, build until a network find us and uh give us opportunity. But you guys are always traveling though. Every time Preston's like, hey, I'm leaving, hey, I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah, we, we do a lot of traveling because it's a lot of shows. A lot of people want to see limited. A lot of people want to be on the show My Breeders Life. You know, because once they see it, like you say, it's like a TV show already. Right. It's just, you know, the right person haven't seen it yet. How many subscribers do you guys have now? Oh, we don't have a lot. We only got like 4,000, something like hey, that. Hey, it's but quality over quantity, yeah. though. But it's real followers. You know, it's real supporters. You know, and it's growing. You know, That's it's authentic. Counts. We We grew it authentically, so... For sure. I'm going to keep pushing. One Amelia. other question I didn't ask. These dogs, like Limited, what type of lifestyle does he have that's different than other dogs? Like You, you, you see it now. I mean, you he's know? spoiled. I can see it. <laughs> you but see it now. Food, what food do they eat? Well, Limited, he's, he's a good eater. That's what I like about him. He'll eat any food I put out there, but I feed him a food called from. Okay. You know, and then sometimes I'll add some raw duck with it. Or some raw liver. He loves that as well. Okay. And and of course he gets to drive in my my AMG. He rides in it. Wow. Any car he he rides that in. That sounds like Ella. Uh-huh. Yeah. He he. Steaks. Yeah. Hey. He he do what he wants. He likes to eat steak. Oh yeah. He he eats steaks every now and then as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. What about his bath time? I mean, is he getting massages? No. No. For me, he do. But I don't. I don't take him anywhere to get it. Okay. But that that might be something I should do, should consider. Ella gets facials. She gets blueberry facials. So I I had to ask. Yeah, he needs that. George, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing so much knowledge. I honestly had no idea what it takes to be a professional breeder.